Welcome to Switch It Up. Yes, welcome. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see that energy coming. We have something kind of special today. We're going to answer a couple questions that we've been getting about who? Shrek. Who is Shrek, Sheila? If you're new to the channel, Shrek is this lovely pick em up truck. Yes, 3,500 gram. Yes, my daddy said never buy a Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, obviously we, we're starting off this with a bang. <laughs> and we bought a Dodge. <laughs> yes, and there's many reasons why we did. Yes, so why? Why did we? Why did we? Why, why did, did we? we choose Shrek to tow this wonderful, what's our what's our rig's name? Fiona. Yeah, Fiona. Because Shrek and Fiona go together. So today is about Shrek. It's a Shrek day, and we're going to clue you in on all the questions. What size tires? Did we do a lift? What's this? What's the weight? What's this? What's, to, what's that? What's to touch the truck. So we're going to roll the intro. We're going to come back. We're going to answer all the questions you have about Shrek. So if you're looking to start your journey and looking for a truck and start RVing, these might be able to answer that. Ready? Roll the intro. A man and a woman left their home to switch things up and go on the so unscripted <laughs> we, I think we don't you're talk a little square squared you're not sure what i'm going to say about this <laughs> yes after he already said never buy a dodge <laughs> well, that's what he said it's a ram it's a ram let's start there most people don't call them dodges they call them rams that there that there is a ram okay but this is a 2021 okay let's give some statistics it's a 2021 mm -hmm. i'm just saying that Dodge or Ram has come a long way since in the 80s when dad said don't get one of those. They have redone everything. Everything. And so we weren't even sure we wanted to even take a look at this Ram. Yes. It was preconceived ideas that we had because we were a Ford family for so long. Yes. When you are starting your RV life, you have to start making some decisions like what kind of truck are you going to drive? What are the weight requirements and what can it tow? And how do you figure this out? Should we get a dually? Should it stay single wheel? There's a lot of things that come into play. Yeah, to, needless to, you know, Rick, you were a little overwhelmed, I needless was. to say. Sheila made a spreadsheet that we're going to share with you, though, that really helped answer the questions. I didn't make no, the spreadsheet. No, no, let's, yes. Mark from KYD made the spreadsheet. I just... She tweaked it. She sheila it. I just put all our options together to say, oh, look, we can't have this Ford that you're liking because of this. Or you can't have this <laughs> Dodge that you like. We started with the trucks that we found and trucks we are did. hard to find right now especially when we started our journey and if you're right now in the middle of this trying to find trucks this spreadsheet is going to help you yeah. i believe but let's talk about what we've got what we got 2021 limited ram 3500 fully loaded to the gill dual rear wheel yes with a dual rear wheel see Means that it's got some junk in the trunk oh man a lot of junk in the trunk <laughs> And a lot of people go, well, when you got it, you know, why did you make some changes? Things like that. Well, one, we've never owned a black vehicle. So this became, well, no, I guess that's right. We did have a Ford Explorer that was black. And it was a pain in the butt. When she made that face, then I had to rethink. And when we got this, once you get bigger wheels and tires and doing all that, we were getting a lot of rock chips. And then this opened another door, which opened another door, which opened another door. And here we are. Well, let's go back. Okay. You told them what you have. But Todd doesn't just leave his truck the way it was. Oh, well, I'm not extra or anything. Well, kind of. We had to get bigger tires. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about the tires? Let's talk about your tires. Do we have... I already had a hard time, like, you can't see me <laughs> you can't, <you're laughs> in front right. of the truck. Why not make it bigger? Okay, so let's talk about the tires. We just went a little bit bigger on the tires because I just like a meatier, beefier looking tire. So it's the Falcon Wilder. Oh, Wild Peak, not Wilderness. Wild Peak AT. They're, they're, they're what? 275. <laughs> 65 R20s. 
One thing I, we, done, we didn't like, we didn't like the regular wheel that was mm -hmm. on the truck, so we had to get new wheels. Those are when the fuels. When you got the new tires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they only make certain wheels when you're doing with a dually, so I like the looks of it. People always ask why the one toenail painted green. When it spins around in a circle at a slow speed, the wheel looks green. I didn't know that was a toenail. I didn't know that was. I call it a toenail. Painted one toenail. So Shrek has eight toes. That's <laughs> oh, weird. I don't know. <laughs> And then after we did this, we put a three inch lift on the front so it leveled the whole truck out. And that's great. But once you got the bigger tire, it threw rock chips and we started getting chips back here on this panel. And one of the things they said is we could get like the clear bra material to put on there. And then after we started searching, I think, did you find the indestructible wrap? Yeah, we did. We found, yeah. we found that as a good option. And I like the way it changes the look of the truck. Yes, and everybody wants to come up and touch it. They think it's rhino lining. Yes. Is what they really think. And we actually looked at rhino lining. Mm -hmm. They have a rhino lining that's a lot thinner in material, but he was unsure of doing such a thing. And he said it's permanent once you did it. So this option became the option. And yeah, because you can take this off when we go to sell Shrek. If somebody doesn't like it. Because, yes, we will sell, sell Shrek someday. At some point. Yes, we There's will. There's things in Ta the world. You never know. We switch it up a lot, apparently, around here. What else do you want to talk about? Well, how long? This has been on a year. People have been asking, how, how has it been doing? It's been actually doing great, with the exception of a couple areas where down over here, we have a couple bubbles that are forming. Oops. And then this is actually a seam, and that seam is now opened up a little bit. But that's through all the heat and everything. But if you look at it, it looks like brand new. It's There's no, no, even back here, this is, I just washed it, so there's some rain drips, but I don't know. It's fabulous. I, I can't say year, enough good things. I think thing. it's done a really, really good job. Yep. I wasn't so sure about getting a dual rear wheel drive truck because I am not sure I like the... I like the junk in the truck. Where's family show? It's a, fam it's a fa family show. <laughs> but it's grown on me, right? Yes. It, it has. And you feel very stable when pulling Fiona. Yeah. Now you have to realize though when you're doing with a this type of truck and you put a wider wheel on and you're doing all this it does not do well in like it's not going to be a great off-road vehicle the, the the dual wheels don't do well in like mud like you would think it would because you'd have it just doesn't work that way it sits on top it doesn't dig in so you have to keep that in mind there are some drawbacks now towing regularly you have more rubber on the road back there so i just feel more stable fiona is a gvrw of twenty thousand pounds we actually had it weighed was it like 18,900 is kind of when we had it weighed and that was with that's the motors that's the motorcycle, motorcycle loaded, both fuel loaded. tanks loaded half of fresh water and probably half gray water it was fully loaded 18.9 and we're at 20,000 so that's important to know especially when we go in and talk about the spreadsheet stuff that you have to know what those numbers are and they're located on the side of your rig also you have to know what your truck is and those are located here on the side of your door panel. So this truck, I think is 14,000 pounds. 14,000. Yeah. These numbers are gonna come in handy in Sheila's lovely little spreadsheet. Mark's spreadsheet. Mark's spreadsheet that she, Sheila tweaked. That's gonna come in handy when we go in and we talk about all that kind of stuff too. So we covered the wheels, we covered the tires, we covered the lining. What's mo well, what, what sold me on this truck uh -huh. versus, cause we looked at a Ford, yeah, we, we looked at the 450. The Ford has a better turning radius. Yeah, the 450 has a 20 or 30 percent better turning radius than what a 3500 does. However, the interior of this truck is what sold me. That into consideration, we but found we didn't, a couple. We, we only have two choices though when we were looking for trucks in Kansas City. They were all sold out. Well, we had to look outside of Kansas City, so mm -hmm. we had to definitely do that. We found a truck that was in Kansas City, just exactly like this, but it didn't have the high output. So we had to put. That was in, that spreadsheet told us, hmm. but the reason why I think we went with this truck overall over the Ford was just the interior. We felt like the um, Ford was more utilitarian feeling. It was just a Absolutely. personal preference, but this interior, we're in it a lot. We're traveling a lot. Of course, we've it's, done 36,000 miles in this truck in 11 year. and a half months. Yeah. But it's comfy. Very, I love the interior. It just feels good. It feels good. Feels good. They did a really good job of redesigning everything. People were asking about the GPS. So we went with the yes. Garmin 890. We did a video on that mm -hmm. and we really like it. But where do you place it? 
Um, with this truck design, we found a unique area, and that was in the center. Yeah, you you kind of have you kind of have to set up like a cockpit command center for mm -hmm. all all the things: the TPMS, yeah. the, the GPS. You've got a camera. Yeah, we have the Garmin dash cam, and the reason for that is is you don't know the idiots that are out there and security purposes. Yeah, especially with. I mean, we see semis all the time get brake checked and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, and acts just people looking for free ride. Yes, let's just and say so that. So we just have a camera for that reason. Yeah, and it's worked out really well. It, it's caught some craziness. We had somebody put a cone on the front of our truck, which was nice when we stayed the night in a Cracker Barrel, and they stole, which I didn't get on video. They stole our other cone in the back of. Why? I, I, why would you steal a cone? I, I don't know why they need. They needed a cone, obviously. <laughs> But our dash cam is wired so it runs 24 7 and it is actually plugged in at the top and that plug-in is actually live all the time movement it kicks the camera on and starts recording it's kind of a cool little thing the tpms system we are now upgrading from what we currently have to tire minder we gave the tire minders because for my dad when he wanted to take off and we love that system so much better and so we got a better tire minder system we're going to be doing a video on that on installation which i think will be great for everyone to see but yeah from your tpms and your it's, you're right it is like a cockpit we it have is. everything right around us it's actually a pretty pretty cool setup now people are going to ask well what about in the bed well we did a video on that too we did the reese 20k because sheila why do we have the gooseneck because we need our, we wanted our bed for toys. Yes. Like we, we like to get, do yeah. things, and so we need to kayaks, slide the bicycles. kayaks in, bikes in, whatever. It just made sense for us to not have that big everything taken up thing in the middle so we just went with the gooseneck system now and when we hook up with the gooseneck i covered this in another video and you can find that as well is that we actually put airbags on the back of shrek and that is not to it airbags do not increase capacity as far as like what you can put in the bed and your pin weight going into the bed of your truck all it simply does is it allows the truck to ride even since we put the leveling kit on shrek and we wanted it to keep, stay even down the road. Otherwise, you're going to get your wheels up a little more and they're going to hop, all kinds of stuff. So that's the reason we did the airbags. And that might help someone out if you're going to look at using a dually. A lot of you might not be looking at a big setup like this, but if some of you are, airbags might be a choice. And they were like $600 to have installed. question that we do get is also about me driving. Oh, and gosh. I will drive Trek. I have driven, I'll take Trek shopping. Yeah. The only thing is, is that you just, I just have to back him in to park him. Mm -hmm. He's just a beast. Yeah, with a dually, definitely backing in to park is your best bet for everything. Yeah, just with the backup camera just makes it totally, it's so I don't mind driving Shrek. I have not driven Shrek attached to Fiona yet. No, she's so little intimidated, which I can see because I was intimidated since we started our journey and I almost put our wonderful RV in the ditch within five hours. Yes, and there's also another reason that I haven't told you. Oh no, what? what? You suck as a navigator. Oh God. You get busy, you get sidetracked. We are not here something. for that, Sheila. We're I'm not talking saying, about, this I is not marriage counseling section. I would need you with the navigation and we wouldn't, be where, we wouldn't end up where we needed to go. So I'm just a better navigator. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Why don't we do this? Um, you're gonna ask again. Somebody asked about our toolbox. I actually, when we first started our journey, I did a toolbox check and I'll put that video up above and you can kind of see the toolbox we chose for the back. It's a low profile to toolbox so it doesn't interfere with turning radius and everything as well. I think that covers everything. Tires, wheels, GPS, inside, all the bells and whistles and the, the gizmos and gadgets and I don't know, lions, and tigers and bears. Oh my. Oh my, Casey. Um, I think what it boils down to is we've had Trek for a year. Yeah. I wasn't sure we were going to like him, mm -hmm. but I really like our truck. Ram, you did a really good job. Yeah, it's like, a great this truck. This is an amazing truck. You don't even know Fiona's back there most of the time. Like, and it just, it's a great ride. It's yep. comfortable. It does the job. I now, when, you, when you're looking for these, this truck, it does have the high output engine, yes. which she did talk about for a minute. And the gear ratio in the back, there's two types of gear ratios. We're running with 3.73, I believe. And there's actually a 4.11. I think we're the 4.10. Nope. Are we not? Mm -mm. Okay, I thought we were the 4.10. 3.7. So 3.7 does better in highway uh, speeds. And the 4.11 is geared for lower for towing better. Maybe so. you should tell them how much you get for gas mileage. Oh, Gas mileage is actually great. It's Without Fiona. It's around 17 miles to the gallon, and it's a 50-gallon tank. 
Yep. And then as far that as That was one of the things on our list. We wanted that 50 gallon tank mm -hmm. for... So we didn't have to stop all the time. Yep. And then while we're towing, we're still running around that nine to 10, but it's kind of hard to tell. Our speedometer's off five miles an hour because of the tires being bigger. And they did not put out a uh, reset so you can reset your speedometer to the tire size yet for this because it's so new. We think we're getting a little bit better gas mileage than nine to 10 just because of the tire size diameter. Yeah. I will say that if you're looking for a truck and then you can't find one in your area, mm -hmm. you just go do that whole nationwide search. We were just in Texas and there's quite a few yes. trucks. I saw a lot of dual wheel uh, trucks in Texas. Ban your search. We flew into Chicago. Chicago. Oh yeah, we should tell them that. We couldn't find one in Kansas. Well, we did find one in Kansas City. Not the with the engine and the no. gas tank we wanted. Well, here's what happened. Like we go into this, my arm's getting tired. We go into this dealership and he keeps saying, oh, it'll tow it, it'll tow it. It's like, well, yeah, it'll tow it, but will it do what it needs to do? And after we worked on using the spreadsheet and everything, we found out that this size rig does not work well with the regular engine, not the high output. Yeah, and that was so a red check mark on her little sheet. Maybe we should take, go in and show that little sheet too. Yeah, so even if your dealer tells you, you need to do your own research, your own due diligence. That's why this spreadsheet that Mark created is great because it'll tell you, oh, no, I just you you owe it to yourself for your own that you was, have to do your own it homework. was one of our best discoveries when we were trying to figure all this out so we did find one in Kansas City the exact same truck just, just different have. engine and different gas tank so we flew to Chicago so we flew to Chicago so just buy a truck fly to wherever it is and drive it home we bought it sight unseen they got it in I and called there's no went price through the negotiations yeah there was right no, now no, mm -mm. not now no. And now let's say that you, hey, I'm not interested in that. Our rig's going to be smaller. We're just going to do a pull behind. You still need to know these calculations on if you're using like a F-150 or a 1500 or yeah, how big you, your need, rig to, you need to know that towing capacity. And I think this will help. So let's jump in and do that and we'll close out. Sound good? Okay. Oh, that sounds good. Ooh, it's a little coffee. Like, not coffee. It's a little table time. That's what this is. A little table time to discuss this wonderful spreadsheet you're so cute sometimes <laughs> whatever <laughs> shut up <laughs> okay so <laughs> well, yeah, she does that without food i am um, there's no snacks or nothing it's actually Ooh. cleaned off for you guys to sit there and go wow they really live a clean life no this is my desk and usually has all kinds of there's stuff there's my desk back there that's where we edit anyway i digress we don't we yeah. don't. I edit. So this is the KYD spreadsheet that Mark did that really helped us out. Sheila yes. did some tweaks. No, I just you, used it. Oh, I thought you did some tweaks to it. Well, I've misspoke again. This happens a lot. From this point forward, though, um, I need to do a disclaimer for us and KYD that one, we appreciate them making this spreadsheet and hopefully it helps one of you guys out as well. And number two, do not take any of our words for it. Our channel, their channel, anyone's words for it. This is all on you. This spreadsheet, you know, is a tool. You still need to do your research because none of us are professionals. So you are just taking our opinion at what it is and hopefully this will help. There's your disclaimer. Look at that, legalities. We're learning. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a couple of examples. She has the blank sheet and the blank sheet is what you will be able to use. And then we're gonna give you the example of the non high output engine in the high output engine so you can see kind of what we did and that way you can kind of see why it makes a difference to go through the steps like we're going through now right so basically i we were looking at three different trucks yes we looked at the dodge with the high output the dodge without and then a ford, ford. f350 yes so we were looking at those three options we kind of found three that we liked and but we didn't know until we came back to do the math as to which truck we should be purchasing that would be able to tow fiona yeah I would recommend, if you have several trucks you're looking at, just do a tab for each one. Of course. And then that way you can compare them. You but can just do a quick little copy and paste in, or you just do, how do you do no, that? How yeah. do you do tabs? So I don't know how to do a tab. Tell me how to do a tab. So you go down here to, like, yeah. if you're going to use this empty uh -huh. tab, and you right-click on it, and it says, move oh, or copy. And okay. you say that, and you hit, oh, I want to create okay, a copy. Okay. okay, see, now you know, because I didn't know. I usually use Google Sheets, but because of the formulas and the way this is set up, Excel works better. So, okay, just FYI. FYI. So at the top, you're just going to enter what truck you're looking using this sheet for. You're going to put all of your uh, what is your rig requirements over mm -hmm. here under the towable RV, 
and then you just go through and you enter in all the details from the from your truck the manufacturer specs that they give you yes. when you're looking at the truck or just take it like when we were shopping we were taking pictures on the of the door mm -hmm. and we were bringing the back the information and, and saying it all will, in. will this work will this one work so let's show them the non this is the non high output engine and this is the salesperson telling us oh it'll tow it it'll tow it it'll be just fine so when we pulled the numbers, we entered in on that one. This is 3, we, the, the 3500 non-how I put. So it gave it we, curb weight, GVWR, GCVWR, the payload and the towing capacity. When we entered in all of the Fiona's details, Fiona's details, we entered in our cargo and our passenger. You said our cargo is probably more like 350 just to be better on that side we see that okay the available capacity or payload capacity the new gvw or the gvr no the gvw and the gcvw these little red x's mean eh, eh, it's bad that isn't going to work it's not going to work with what we were going to do so this is the reason we ended up having to change the towing capacity got us right so there we ended up going to the high output engine which gave different specs so when right. you went to the high output engine, but to look at the side, the difference in that towing capacity, capacity. and this GCVWR, um, which was when you calculated that in, then it, all the you need all of these things down here to have these nice green little check marks. This comes down to your stopping power. I mean, it really comes down to the power, stopping power, everything that comes in, really is the reason why this sheet was so important. We can't thank KYD enough for this because we couldn't find anything like it. And yeah, I mean, it just really made it super easy for us to say, oh, wow, we really like that truck. A, that truck was cheaper. B, it was local, but it just wouldn't do what we needed it right. to do. So it helped us make a safe choice. For us. Yeah. Now, this could play into, like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be a dual real. This could be a single. Mm -hmm. uh, rear wheel drive. It could be a 250 because you're towing something smaller, even an F-150. Really doesn't matter. All the numbers still plug in the same because you're going off of your towable RV or you don't have to worry about this Class A. This showed us though that we could have went with the Ford 350. Yes. So the, that narrowed it down to, okay, we got to decide between these two trucks. Mm -hmm. And we just went with, with Shrek because we liked I like the inside of Shrek better. Yep. So we hope this helps. I think this was a good resource and it answers the questions. A lot of times the towing capacity on trucks and what you're going to choose is probably one of the most confusing parts of everything that come into play. So, oh, and everybody has an opinion. Oh, you're going to learn that right away. <laughs> you're going to find out probably in the comments that sometimes our opinion isn't that great. Right. <laughs> but yes. you should like, comment, subscribe, and do all the things because that helps us in the algorithm to let YouTube know that this video is kind of important. Yes, and thanks to Mark and KYD for sharing this resource so we could share it with you. Yeah, I, we did not, we have not found this resource anywhere else, and that's why I think it was such a good thing. Yeah. What well, can we put this in the bottom in the link in the description? We can create this as a link, and you put it in the description page, and they can download it. Yep. Okay, we're gonna try to do that. If not, if you can't find it in the description, then try to look for KYD. I'll try to see if I can find their video that they did on this. It's gonna. It's, it's a, so buried. It's a link on their page as well. Is it? Yes. Okay, well, we'll find it either way. Look in the description of our video and we'll see what we can drum up to get to you. But hopefully this answers those questions. Anything else you wanna add? Uh, yeah, no. No, this is like really one of those informative switch it up via videos. Yeah. Full of talking, adventure. Talking about trucks. <laughs> this is important in RV life. It is important. It is important. But maybe now we could go on a bike ride. Yeah, or kayaking. We yeah. could go do something that's fun. We hopefully educated you. Other than that, until our next video, which usually comes out just in a couple days. We'll see you then. We'll see you then. And you might enjoy it a little better if you're looking for adventure. So you never know what you're going to get you with switching up. <laughs> we don't even know. It's just RV lifestyle in general, and you just enjoy the ride. So with all that being said, we are Sheila. We're out.